This is Rifat Bari, AI researcher at the Morales Lab. This right here is the lab where I work, located at the Center for Discovery and Innovation. Today, you're gonna get an exclusive preview of the first room of our lab. You're gonna see amazing technology that's never been revealed before. High and low field NMR, magnets that are 10 Teslas, millions of times stronger than the magnetic field of the Earth itself. Magnets that fill up the size of entire rooms. You're gonna see crazy RF coils and amazing lenses and mirrors and lasers. All this amazing technology is waiting to be revealed. So join me as I interview the researchers and scientists who make this lab possible at the CDI. And let's see what we can find uh, you out. Want to introduce yeah, yeah, my name is Damon Daw. I'm a PhD student here in the Marillas lab, and I've been working on uh, spin and charge state control of defects in semiconductors. Right, uh, I understand every word of what uh, you said. Okay, okay. so Damon is going to talk about uh, this confocal microscope, and um, it's state-of-the-art, and you guys are going to find out everything about what's inside it. And uh, so, Damon, you can take it away. Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. This black box has, uh, like Rifat said, uh, a confocal microscope. And what this comes down to is um, it's, a, it's a setup that has like a bunch of mirrors, optical filters, polarizers, uh, a few different wavelengths of lasers. Um, and it's all built uh, in-house and designed to deliver a very specific wavelength of laser light. Uh, to a very specific point on the sample over here for mm -hmm. uh, a very precise amount of time. Um, so okay. it's all about uh, spatial and temporal precision and control of where the laser goes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, all right. So what's going on here? Cool. So if you look here, for example, uh, there's a red laser. That's a helium neon gas laser. Yeah. Uh, and we use it to do things like uh, change the st uh, charge state of uh, defects, like the nitrogen vacancy center in diamond. Um, and do a few other things with it. But um, so you're ionizing these things. Yeah, yeah. We oh, can right. ionize them. Uh, we can put electrons back into them. Um, that's what the different colors of lasers are for. Okay. And in order to do that, we have to control very precisely uh, the amount of laser power that gets delivered delivered to the to the defect gotcha. so this thing for example is an optical switch okay uh, it's uh, uses sound waves to deflect the laser beam okay. and turn it on and off very quickly within like uh, nanoseconds mm. yeah okay so you're using sound to to manipulate the, the light beam exactly and we've got a little uh, permanent magnet over here wow. on the stand that we can uh, manipulate around mm -hmm. to uh, put a magnetic field through the sample we're looking at and uh, so we can we can do things like see how the brightness of an NV center changes when you change the orientation of the magnetic field things okay. like that. why do you care about electron spin what's so important what what is its value well for one thing, they make up, or they're in all matter, pretty much. So understanding <laughs> electrons fundamentally is an important thing. But um, what we're most interested in is using that electron that's in the NV minus or orbiting uh, around the NV minus uh, one as a sensor. Mm -hmm. um, the that electron spin has it acts like a little magnet, and oh, so like a magnetometer. Exactly, uh, it is. Yeah, That's yeah. exactly it. Magnetometry yeah. is one of the big things we do. So it's sensitive to the magnetic environment. Okay. Um, and the other thing that uh, we're very interested in is being able to control that electron spin, and. Um, uh, like prepare it in a certain quantum mechanical state uh -huh. and then be able to transfer that quantum information out of the NV center to uh, another defect say and that could form sort of a basis for a quantum computer that exists uh, in a diamond chip at room oh, temperature wow. maybe if we can figure out a way to do that yeah no no thank you very much it's right. been really fun all yeah. right thank you David all right thank you the second equipment we're gonna check out is the cryostat so I'm Tom Delore I'm a postdoc in the mirrorless uh, group uh, I've been working here for a year and so this is uh, more or less my experiment. Yes. Um, and so the idea here, so this is a cryostat. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of my experiment is to put in this cryostat, cryostat uh, what we call a superconductor resonator. Okay. Uh, the idea being that this uh, resonator made of a superconducting material has very good properties at low temperature. Okay. It is essentially much, much better than a standard conductor like metal any kind of metal. All right, so this is the crust that we use. Mm -hmm. uh, we put the sample in there, and uh, so what you can see here is a small window. We use it to uh, get a laser in there okay. and uh, 
to shine on the diamond polarized why why are you making it cold in the first place so yeah that's because the superconductor has what we call a transition okay at high temperature it doesn't work so well okay. it's worse than metal it just okay. doesn't work it's oh, not a conductor okay. Has a very strong resistance, gotcha. and we put in this cryostat a flow, a continuous flow of liquid nitrogen. Yeah. The liquid nitrogen goes all around certain pieces, cooling them down, and those pieces transfer the cold to the sample and the superconductor resonator okay. we have there. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So let me get this clear. So we got liquid nitrogen coming in this way to make make it cold enough to pass the threshold for superconductivity, and then you have these uh, these guys here. And these guys are for detecting the, the what? What do they do? They detect the excitation of the okay. resonator. So the okay. resonator, this is this current and voltage oscillating, uh -huh. and we can measure it uh, okay. with this, those wires. Okay. And then those wires is actually connected to all these tubes here yeah. into the cryostat, through the transfer line to the cryostat, yeah. uh, cool down everything we need to cool down, and, and then so comes out of it. These guys would be connected usually, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we, okay. We put the transfer line in there. Okay. And all of the liquid nitrogen comes from this thing. Yes, that okay. would fill uh, Jesus. regular basis. I learned a lot. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Have a good one, man. You too. Our next equipment, the third one. The next equipment we're going to check out is high field NMR. All right, folks, so what I've got right here is a 10 Tesla magnet, which is millions of times stronger than the Earth's own magnetic field. Hi, everyone. I'm Roberta. I'm a postdoc with the group. And this one behind me is a nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer that generates a high magnetic field. Um, and the way we use it as many other groups is by uh, introducing a sample inside the magnet. Um, the, the large magnetic field is going to polarize the nuclear spins along the direction of the field and then we flip that polarization with the radio frequency pulse and detect the precession of it back to the equilibrium orientation. So you're going to show us how the sample gets shuttled from the top, from the bottom to the top? Yes, so okay. just to give a bit of context as to why we do so, um, this has to do to one of, with one of the limitations of NMR, which is the low sensitivity. Uh -huh. And uh, one way to overcome that um, is by um, transferring a polarization from the electronic spins to the nuclear spins. And the electronic okay. spins can be excited, as we do in our group, by optical excitation. That's where we optically excite the electrons. The, okay. the polarization is transferred to the nuclei, and then it is shuttled up in the large magnetic field that I talked about earlier. Uh, and that's where we detect. Uh, and that's the first step. That's when we uh, optically polarize. Um, and that's also when the sample is at the lowest level, so it's basically at the bottom there. Uh -huh. It's going to stay, the laser is going to stay on for an amount of time that we decide. In our case, indeed, for these experiments, it's 10 seconds. Uh -huh. um, and then as soon as that's finished, you see now the laser is on, the, the sample is being polarized by the laser. And then as soon as the 10 seconds finish, the shuttle pumps up the sample uh -huh. to roughly here, okay. which is a region where the magnetic field of the spectrometer is strongest, homoge is strongest okay. homogeneous. Okay. And it's going to stay there for the time that it takes to um, pulse with the RF and detect back the the, okay. the, the, the FID, which you sh showed us previously. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Well, thank you, Roberta. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, hi, my name is Daniela Pagliero. I work here uh, with Professor Mariles. I am um, a research assistant from him. Um, and we're working on low field nuclear magnetic resonance. Okay. So, we just saw like high field NMR with a big magnet. Now we're going to see a low field, right? Yes. Oh. Okay. In this case, it's, uh, it's pretty much um, whatever Robert uh, is doing at uh, high field. But instead of shuttling uh, the probe and detecting at high magnetic field, we're trying to detect at low magnetic field. We are using the MBs, mm -hmm. uh, the, the nitrogen vacancy centers uh, defect from the diamond to detect uh, uh, polarization outside the diamond. The laser mm -hmm. that goes through a couple of optics here and and then it goes inside the, the chip, uh, a chip or a probe that I have inside the magnet, 
at 500 gauss um, and you that was the chip you showed us earlier yes, with the diamond with the diamond so okay. in this case we have to to it's a, just a permanent magnet it has two uh, magnets this is uh, one magnet and one underneath mm -hmm. um, this separation gi gives us a fi magnetic field as uh, about 500 gauss, 500 gauss okay. and the coils that I you see in here, these uh -huh. coils, these yeah. coils, those are uh, coils to control the magnetic field, so okay. uh, the, so that we can change the magnetic field that we have and achieve our goal. Yeah. This is a part of my probe there. Uh, in here, what we have uh, it's uh, the NMR um, the NMR coil that it will be used to detect uh, the, um, the NMR signal uh, pro uh, coming from water or from some liquid inside. Um, in there, I will, put will, will I will introduce a chip like this. This chip uh, has two channels that uh, the I will introduce some water from here to make it flow. And water will come out from here and inside this chamber, uh, there will be some diamonds. In this case, I have uh, 15 membranes in the in in the setup there uh, that I uh, we will show later. Uh, and then yeah, that will go inside this um, uh, this holder. And exactly where the coil is, you see the the diamonds will be placed. Um, we will try to detect the polarization that has been transferred to uh, the liquid outside the diamond. Okay. So you have two lenses and a mirror so that you can increase the degrees of freedom and you can manipulate the light beam to heat the NV center and excite it where you want it to be excited. Uh, 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 yes, and, okay. uh, and I want the beam to be the exactly size that I want. So right. in this like case, a cylinder. Like a cylinder yeah. that excites the most MBs that I can. If I if it's yeah. a if it's just a, it's a point, mm -hmm. you will excite very little because yeah. you, you're gonna excite only a very small volume. But if it's, if it's bigger, mm -hmm. then you, you can, don't. You, you can excite all oh, the okay. all, all the MBs in the diamond. Okay. So okay. Okay. I got it. So I do understand a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so I was able to understand. explain. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So thank you for explaining okay. everything. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Hey there folks. I learned a lot from Damon, Tom, Roberta, and Daniela. And I hope you did too. If you want to join the Morales lab, go ahead, put your resume down below and hit apply. We'll consider you. And finally, this video wouldn't have been possible without the support of Brilliant.org. If you want to continue supporting Barry Science Lab, head over to Brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab for 20% off their premium subscription. Well, I gotta go back to the lab, folks. See ya.